This video is sponsored by Grammarly. Hello there. So I heard that you're looking for some study tips, which is probably why you clicked on this video. Or you're subscribed to me and you're just watching this video because it's in your subscription box or I am a complete stranger to you and I just appeared in your recommended or somewhere on the internet. Whatever the case is. Hello my friends and strangers, it's Nina and welcome to a study tips video. I am probably not going to be wearing these glasses because of the glare, but welcome. So for today's video, I am going to be talking about some study tips that I have as a college graduate or college undergraduate. I graduated from college back in 2019. I went to UC Berkeley as a media studies major and I completed my college education in four years after high school. I did not go to graduate school. I do not plan to, but I have been living the post-college life for the last three years. And during this time, I have thought of more tips that I can share about college, what I wish I knew when I was in college, how to prepare for final season, how to survive final season, and also maintain your health, your peace of mind, and get through this difficult time. So I have made a couple study videos in the past. I even have a dedicated study tips video from a couple years back, but I thought I would just update it with new tips that I have, some insights that I've gained over the last three years of not being in school. Hopefully these tips will be useful to you in your work life, school life, whatever it is. So without further ado, Let's get started. So it's finally May as I'm filming this and I know it's final season for a lot of people, probably for you right now. And I also remember this time being very intense, overwhelming, fast paced. You have to study for multiple exams, write a lot of notes, flashcards, go over a lot of material, write a bunch of papers, finish all your assignments. And then on top of that, you could also be working, dealing with emails, basically dealing with a lot and facing a time crunch. So this time probably calls for some useful tools. Well, do I have one tool that you can use? before? I get into all of my study tips, I do want to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is Grammarly. So if you don't know what Grammarly is, it is an all-in-one writing tool that helps you with your productivity and saves you time when you have multiple assignments to work on. Grammarly is free to download and actually very easy to integrate into your daily life. It works where you work, such as in Google Docs, to help you save time and work more efficiently for any of your assignments. It'll help you correct errors and give you suggestions as you write. You don't have to switch between apps, it's just right there in front of you, and it just helps you get things done faster. So Grammarly has a free version with basic grammar grammar and spelling suggestions, but you can also upgrade to Grammarly Premium, which will save you so much more time with their advanced features so you can feel confident that your writing is compelling. There are multiple ways that Grammarly can help you succeed on your finals. Grammarly has a free synonym feature so you can replace overused words. I know that I struggle with using the same words, especially if you're writing a multiple page paper. You're gonna need to switch up your words a lot. Grammarly also has a free setting goal feature which will help you get the right message across, especially during a time crunch, and it'll ensure that you're writing to the right audience. And if you update to Grammarly Premium, you can get your work done faster and save time finding citations with their plagiarism detector. It's more than just a spelling and grammar checker, although that is very useful, especially if I'm writing a lot of emails and I don't check my spelling. It will point it out to me, suggest better words, and it just helps me look a little more professional, a little more concise, but I think it'll definitely be a useful tool for anyone, whether you're in work, in school, whatever it is. So with all your assignments and exams coming up, with final season, midterm season, whatever it is coming up, I do suggest trying out Grammarly to hopefully make your life a little easier. So if you'd like to try out Grammarly for yourself, you can go to grammarly.com slash Nina to sign up for a free account. And if you'd like to get extra features, you can also upgrade to Grammarly Premium for 20% off to help you save time and work more efficiently. I hope Grammarly can be a useful tool for you as it has been for me. And also thank you Grammarly for sponsoring this video. But without further ado, let's get into the rest of this video and all of my new study tips and some old ones because I did have some good study tips back in the day. I also don't know why I put these back on. I don't need these. So speaking of having the tools to make your life easier during final season, the first thing that I want to talk about is setting up a good study session. But if you're going to study from home, make sure your desk is nice and tidy and try not to have clutter around you so that your mind doesn't feel cluttered. And if you don't prefer to study at home, go and find a cafe or a library or some kind of place to study at as well. And honestly, when you're not in the comfort of your home, it kind of pushes you to be a little more efficient, get more things done so that when you go home, you can just relax. And then if you work in a cafe, then you can have a nice drink, some snacks, refreshments. Also try to find a place that isn't too loud or distracting or prepare noise canceling headphones, earphones, anything that can kind of lessen the distractions. Maybe even prepare a playlist of music that isn't distracting. I like to listen to lo-fi music playlists 
any playlist that basically just doesn't have lyrics in it. And then also obviously make sure that you have all the materials you need. Studying is going to take a while. A couple hours, maybe a lot of hours, hopefully not too many hours, but it's gonna be a long period of time. So make sure you have refreshments on hand so you don't spend time having to go get refreshments during your break. I will have at least two drinks with me. One to feel productive and because it tastes good and then one for actual hydration. It's nice to have something to sip on and also very important to hydrate yourself. Some snacks that I like to have when I study. Basically just any snack that is easy to eat and isn't messy so that as you're studying, you can munch on something. Just try to make your study session as enjoyable as possible. You don't have to do the most, you don't have to go all out, but at least make sure that you can be in one place for a while. Oh, also, make sure you're dressed kind of comfortably. I know you can't always prepare for that, but try to make sure that you can be as comfy as you can or find a comfy place to sit. Not too comfy. I do not recommend studying on your bed, even though I did that a lot of the time. So those are some of my tips for the actual study session itself. But now I'm going to move on to time management or timing your study session. So this is pretty important to determine your energy for studying and to determine how efficient your studying is going to be. And I know it's easier said than done. Try to give yourself multiple days to a week to even two weeks to study. Just try. And if you can't, at least multiple days to study. I would say at least three days to study. This is something I always wish I did when I was in college. I know that some people just don't have time at all to study, but if you can, at least try to fit in maybe an hour of studying each day for at least a week until exam time. Studying for 10 plus hours the night before the exam, it will burn you out and make you exhausted for the actual exam day. You might not retain everything in such a short period of time so try to give yourself enough time to study and also if you're giving yourself that much time to study try to break down what you're studying so this goes for assignments for studying for projects either in school or in work but breaking something down just makes it easier to finish and accomplish and also it gives you enough time to figure out if you have any questions if there's stuff that you just don't understand you can gather all this and have time to ask a friend, ask a peer, or even ask your professor. Questions will come up as you study. If you're studying the night before, it's very unlikely that you'll be able to send your professor an email and then have an answer back before the exam. It's also just a lot of pressure on you, on the professor. You can go to your professor's office hours. You can send an email. Just try to have proper time to figure out what you don't understand and get all of that answered. Also, go to review sessions if you can. Review sessions were very helpful to me. And again, that's the opportunity opportunity to ask peers for help or just listen to your professor once again. I even went to the optional ones. Even if there were like five to ten students, I still went. Mostly because I was on campus a lot, so I might as well have gone. And I think this is a good segue into how I actually write my notes. I'll get back into time management and all that probably, or maybe that was it. But I will briefly cover how I studied efficiently efficiently, at least in my brain, efficiently. So I don't really know how people write notes these days, but back when I was in college, literally just three years ago, <laughs> sounds like a lifetime ago, the way that I wrote notes in class, I had a laptop and I typed out my notes. In a few of my classes, it was actually required to handwrite notes, but for the majority of my classes, I did type my notes. Lectures go fast. You don't have the time to write everything. Sometimes your handwriting's not that fast. Even though I am a pretty quick handwriter, I type my notes because it's just faster. So I did type out most of my notes but sometimes I didn't actually understand what I was writing I just wrote it down because I heard it I saw it on the lecture but I didn't have time to actually absorb it so first things first make sure you get the notes down because sometimes you don't have time to think <laughs> you just have to make sure you have the notes that you can study later so I'll type out my notes but then when I'm getting down to actually studying I will go ahead and handwrite those notes so I had notebooks for all of my classes even if I typed out my notes I just had these very thin notebooks but I did handwrite the notes that I typed. And that's because handwriting is good for the brain, apparently. It is kind of nice to take things slow, reread what you wrote, and write it all out once again. So here are my notes. I like to have headers, underline, highlight, use a lot of colors, and of course, indent. And then sometimes I'll draw little diagrams. You can see here. And this is the opportunity for you to paraphrase your notes even more, shorten it, pick out what's the most important thing to write down. And then your notes just become a little shorter. And then next, I I will go in and annotate those notes. 
probably not on the same day but maybe the next day I will take my handwritten notes and then I will annotate them every time <laughs> so annotating is basically making small notes next to the text that you're reading but I annotated my own notes I would go in with a different colored pen and write more notes about the material and thus shortening the notes even more really thinking about what's important maybe even writing examples or applying it to my own life or applying it to different situations so here's an example of an annotation that I made it's on the side here so with all these indentations you give yourself space to write these extra notes and it's just another way to engage with your notes and then this also allows you to ask yourself why is this concept important what should I actually know about this how can I apply this concept to my life because hopefully the things that you're learning in college will be useful to you in your future in your career in your life outside of college if you can apply these things to your life or to something else it also just helps you understand the concept in different ways not just the textbook definition but just in a multitude of ways and this would be helpful for short answer questions for essay questions because life is not multiple choice it's not a b c d sometimes you have to apply it to a different situation to your life life is complex it's complicated so it's good to ask yourself all sorts of questions and think about what you're studying in different ways so that you have a better understanding of what you're studying you can talk in depth about it and maybe you can even teach someone else about it which is a very popular studying tactic as well try to study it enough so that you can teach someone else this concept it'll also kind of give you this confidence about the material it's like oh i know enough about it that i can teach you about it because i am smart i am knowledgeable i have something to offer to other people to the next generation blah blah blah. and then also if you don't know the concept that well and you don't know if you can teach it still try try to explain it out loud to someone or to yourself in the mirror and if you can't figure out how to explain it go back to your notes reread it until you are able to it's okay if you don't understand it just try to get there because you can and then after i annotate my notes then i might make flashcards. Flashcards are also another great technique, study material. Hopefully your notes are brief and concise enough that you can just throw that into a flashcard and then shuffle through them. You can make real ones, also handwrite them, or you can also have digital flashcards like an app on your phone, whatever suits you. But that is pretty much my note-taking system. I just rewrite my notes over and over. Your notes are very key to studying, so try not to take notes just for the heck of it or just because you have to, but try to make those notes useful so that when your future self is studying, they can thank you and be like, wow, you wrote such efficient notes. I can actually understand what you wrote. Thank you, past me. Please make your life easier. Now I'm briefly going to return back to time management, but also a new topic, which is taking breaks. When studying or working on something for a long period of time, we are prone to burnout. Remember to pace yourself when you're studying and just give yourself enough breaks. Your brain literally needs time to heal, time to rest. It'll just be good for your health in the long run. So as you kind of set up your time to study, try to not study for too long each day. I would say maybe like at most like three hours. My breaks in college were usually three hours anyway. Realistically, I think maybe I just had like three hours between classes or when I get home, I would have like three hours till it was 11 p.m. midnight. Three to four to five hours. I don't know what's the best time, but just try to not make it the entire day. But if you do make it the entire day, then fit in breaks as you go. But I also know that people have busy schedules as it is. Maybe you have work, maybe you have extracurriculars and all these activities that kind of prevent you from having full days to study. So maybe it's good news to hear that you don't need an entire day to study. You can break it down into a couple hours each day until the final day. So try to incorporate a break maybe every hour, add in breaks as you go. When I'm working on my webtoon or videos, I will have a period of time when I just set aside work. I watch something fun, take a break to eat or drink something. Maybe I'll take a nap, <laughs> but breaks are important and sometimes you literally have to write in take a break because otherwise you'll forget it's also nice to have timers i have a little timer here i use it all the time to time how long i'm going to work and then time my breaks but try not to sit at one place for so long and if you do 
also forgive yourself but just remember it's okay to take breaks and during those breaks maybe take some time to stretch roll your neck around reach for your feet reach for the sky go to the bathroom or treat yourself to something entertaining when i work i like to have manga next to me so i can read it or maybe i'll have an episode of anime i want to watch some youtube videos or just something to relax my brain for a little while breaks are good breaks are important don't guilt yourself into thinking oh i don't deserve a break your body will thank you if you take the time to take care of yourself another good idea for a break go outside breathe in the fresh air and go for a walk or walk in pace if you can't go that far but something i also like to do is literally just go outside and take a walk look up at the sky and be reminded that the world is so big and so pretty and beautiful sometimes also days of rest count as well make sure you have a weekend or at least a day or two to just relax you might not always have time to have a day to relax but it is nice to kind of take a break from the chaos of final season of whatever is in your life try to have a day where you just reset or just rest and if not make use of those short breaks also another thing i highly recommend try to get a lot of sleep which is also why i did recommend a lot of days to study it's so that you can kind of schedule in time where you can have a good eight hours of sleep maybe even six hours sometimes you just don't have enough time but if you can get at least six to eight hours of sleep each night that will help you not break down in the future the little decisions you make in your life right now will eventually lead to your future i'm talking to myself three years later make sure that you fit enough time to sleep and to rest so that you can keep going as time goes all-nighters might be fun they might be necessary but it's also important to actually rest so that you can properly have energy for the next day. I know that when I pull all-nighters, I will get a lot of things done, of course, but the next day, even if I wanted to do something with the next day, I will be so drained that all I want to do is sleep. We are not superhuman. Sometimes we just can't function after an all-nighter. So just make sure you get enough sleep prior to studying. And this is just a life lesson in general. Prioritize sleep so that your body doesn't break down on you. Focus on being able to have energy for the long run instead of doing everything at once and then just being absolutely exhausted and drained for a long period of time. It's definitely important to be in kind of of like the right mood when you're studying and if you're tired if you're drained if you're not feeling well it's not going to be a good time and it's going to be kind of a drag so i hope that you can have a positive studying experience because you deserve it don't neglect yourself for the sake of getting good grades for the sake of getting things done don't forget about yourself it's obviously good to get good grades and like pass your classes but also don't make yourself the last priority make sure you're the first priority and then make sure you're getting everything done as well i also hope that what you're learning can be useful to you not just in college but also to your future self to your future life a lot of what i studied did end up being part of my future life as well so i am glad that i learned these things beforehand so that i can talk about it in the future apply it to my life i know that at the time when i'm studying for something or i'm writing a paper i'm like what is the point of writing this paper i am losing hours of sleep i am so tired how's this going to help but if i can find a way to treat it like something that will be useful for me in the future then i can have fun with it and i can see it as less of a negative thing or less of a foreign thing that i'll never understand and i'll be like hmm how can i make use of this how can i apply this to life after i leave college or high school or whatever it is i think that's something i didn't really think too much about when i was in college but years later i kind of now <laughs> see the value in the things that i learned and sometimes i wish i learned more or or I, mm, I was gonna say sometimes I wish I had more years of college but no I'm glad I'm done but I think as you get older you kind of see the value in what you learned not just in school but in life not everyone has to go to college learning doesn't stop so hopefully we're all learning each day and not being afraid of growth and improving the way that we think blah 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 <laughs> but I think those are most of the tips that I can give right now I hope I covered everything I hope that this video was of use to you during your final season and I am wishing you the best of luck you will get through this I I got through it and this will soon be just a short period of time that you will look back on in the future sometimes can't believe i went through so many years of final seasons <laughs> also thank you to grammarly for sponsoring this video and being a tool that people can use during such a chaotic time again if you would like to try out grammarly for yourself you can use my link grammarly.com nina where you can sign up for a free account and get a free download and then with my link you can also upgrade to grammarly premium for 20 percent off to help you save more time and work more efficiently but that is going to be it for my updated study tips 
video. If you have tips of your own, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm sure they'll be useful to someone as well. I am wishing you a good, successful final season, and I will see you in my next video. I'm sending you a virtual hug for strength. You got this. You're a star. Bring it in, and I will see you next time. Goodbye, my friends.